In this third part of the tutorial, I will now create a burndown chart to fill my bottom left corner of my view. In order to do that, I will need to fragment my data on different data points, and these data points will be set at different time intervals. So I will need to fragment my data to find out how much work was left at different times within the sprint duration. So, in order to do that, I will create a few classes in order to fragment my data. First, I will create a class that will tell me, well, what is all the data I need for my burndown. So I will call it the sprint burndown. Then, this class will have a few instances. One of them will be the linked sprint as a reference. The other one will be the time interval at which I want to apply the data point. So for instance, I will set this time interval to be one day in the usual case. So the time interval will be of a type double, uh, long rather. There we go. Next, once I have my sprint and my time interval, I need to fragment this data based on all the times I can get based on the sprint start date and end date. So I will need a list. So I will create a new list which will be a timed sprint breakdown list. The list will be of type property list. And the time sprint breakdown, well, I will need a new class for this. So I will come into my package, create a new class. Which will be a time sprint breakdown. And associate the time sprint breakdown into my list. Next, I will create a few properties for that sprint breakdown. So the first property will be, again, the link sprint. So I can just copy paste the link sprint property here. I will also need a specific time at which I will extract the time remaining for, that, for the sprint. And I will need a list of timed task breakdown. And I have one probably too many, so I can just delete it. And I will need actually one more probably here to extract the time left. work effort left will be of type double. The breakdown time will be of type calendar. And now in every sprint I will need to break down every task to find out how much time was left at this specific point in time. So I will start with an inner object with instead of a linked sprint I will have a linked task. Next, I will have a breakdown time, again, as a calendar. And I will also have a link to the work event that I need. So what I can do is take the task latest work event field and rename it to selected work event, which will point to the amount of time that was left at the task at the current time. Now. I should be ready to create a few rules to automatically deduce all these values. So first of all, I will start with the task breakdown to select the work event that I want to fetch. So I will create a rule.
set selected work event. This rule will have a single output, which will be the selected work event. And this rule will have four input. One of them is going to be the breakdown time. Another one of them is going to be the work event list. And the work event date list. So to get the work event list, I will need to follow the link task. And from the link task, I will select the work event list. And from the work event list, I will select every work event. For the work event date list, I will follow the same links. So the link tasks and the work event list. fetch the date out of every work event. Next, I will need to select the date instance as input for my rule so that I may find, I may read that property and use it to filter the list of work events. So I will need a static reference to the date instance. and apply the work event date property as the static collection. Now I'm ready to implement my rule. So in order to implement my rule, I will need to first filter my list. So I will create a filtered list. So I will filter the work event list based on the property, which is the date instance. And I will filter it based for everything that is bigger than the date or the time at which I'm fetching my data point. I will then return the work event, which is the latest in the list. based on the filtered list, I will get the maximum value for the date instance.